This episode continues on with the second part of the AP Chemistry discussion on topics 3.7 through 10. So the next concept we're going to talk about really briefly is just mole fraction. Um, this is a concept that gets presented in the partial pressures pogol. And the main thing to remember here, the reason that mole fraction also applies to gases is because air is literally a gaseous solution of gases. So even when you're talking about the air, looking at the ratio of moles of a solute, so any of the given individual gases in the air, per moles of entire air would give you a mole fraction of a certain gas in the air. So it's the same concept. All right. Moving on to solubility, uh, we did talk about it a little bit in the last discussion, um, but just as a super quick review, remember that um, the main thing that's going to control solubility is solute to solvent interactions. So again, that's intraparticle forces being overcome and turning into or bonding with um, the molecules of the solvent through interparticle forces. Okay. Temperature and pressure both affect those. Remember that pressure is only actually going to affect a gas. You can't squeeze a liquid or a solid. So the only thing that's going to be affected by pressure for solubility is the solubility of a gas. Okay. Um, solubility is an equilibrium situation. So when we get to a couple topics a little bit later in terms of um, equilibrium, we're actually going to look at solubility equilibrium. So as of right now, we've pretty much just described things as being either soluble or insoluble. And there is actually a, a way to quantify that. And that's, like I said, something we'll do later when we get to equilibrium. Okay. So just to review colligative properties really quickly and then be done with this part of the discussion. Okay, the main thing here is that these are going to depend on the solute concentration. But the important thing to remember here is that the solute may dissociate into more than one particle. Okay, so even though the solute is NaCl, the number of particles in the solution is going to be twice that concentration because you have two types of ions that are being formed. So this is kind of similar to where I was talking about molarity in the previous video. So just as an example again, if we have a 0.1 molar NaCl solution, then that means we have 0.1 moles of sodium ions and also 0.1 moles of chloride ions. But if we're talking about the number of particles in that entire solution, we have two molar as our concentration. Okay, the main colligative properties that you need to know are the two that go down. So vapor pressure goes down and freezing point goes down and then boiling point increases. Osmotic, de sorry, osmotic pressure depends on what's already on the sides of a semi-permeable membrane. Remember that osmosis only happens when water moves across a semi-permeable membrane. So if you it depends on where the solutes are in that particular case, okay? So actually visualizing how a colligative property interacts is what this graph is showing us. So you can see here, the solid line is the normal graph for this particular um, solvent, okay? So you can see that's why it says pure solvent. So for example, that's pure water, okay? If you were to add something to the solvent, then it's going to cause this portion to go this way, okay? And keep in mind this point here between, or like as you cross over from solid to liquid, that's gonna be where your melting point would be found or your freezing point. Okay, so since the, the graph spreads out to the left side, that's showing freezing point depression because it's the temperature is going down from what it was before, okay? On this side, when you go from liquid to gas, you can see that adding particles to that pure solvent are causing it to go to the right side, and that's boiling point elevation. So those are the main two things that are going to be affected. The reason that there's nothing down here on the sublimation deposition portion 
is because you're basically, in order for something to go from a solid directly to a gas, it has to bypass a lot of its intermolecular forces that normally get formed to make something a liquid first. So only very few compounds will sublime in a normal situation. So that's why you don't really see those as much, okay? In the online notebook, you can get to this link um, from Purdue that has a pretty solid um, tutorial on colligative properties. We were going to do a lab, um, but basically the main thing that you would see about that is that the number, the concentration of the solution and the number of particles that that solution dissociates into is what affects a colligative property, okay? Finally, I just wanted to review briefly mixtures, and these are all stations that we've done before. This is back when we had the super fund uh, mixture that you guys were separating. So this would have been like unit two at the very beginning of last semester. But I did want to give you a couple fancier terms for some of these um, types of methods. Okay, so the first one is simply filtration. You can see that that's a mixture that they're filtering in a filter paper. But in AP chemistry, because we're just using gravity and not vacuum, we call this gravimetric analysis. I might have given you all that term before, but just in case I forgot, or because it's been a long while, let's come bring that up again. So gravimetric analysis. All right, the one to the right of that is paper chromatography, uh, which is a really fun technique to use. But aside from the little experiment that we did, we don't use it a whole lot. The main thing is that you're separating two liquids from each other that have different polarities is usually how it works because it depends on the polarity of the solvent that you're using and then the polarity of the particular liquid mixture you're trying to separate. Okay, then we have magnets. And the last two, I wanted to point out again, the, the point of each thing. So noting that you have solid particles here after evaporation, this is going to isolate the solute for you. You're not really gonna be able to recover the solvent in the case of straightforward evaporation, okay? In the case of distillation, yes, here you have your solute, okay? But a lot of times that's gonna be more like a mixture and what you're actually isolating is the solvent or in this case, the water, okay? So you're mainly getting the solvent by itself and not the, not the salt since this was salt water. Okay, um, I know it's been a long time since we did the paper chromatography lab. We don't, I'm not gonna have you guys do this right now, but I did wanna point out that the reason that things moved different distances would have been because the solvent you all had was ethanol, so E-T-O-H is how we abbreviate that. And a lot of the acid base indicators are also in ethanol. So that's why a lot of them traveled as far as the solvent front. If you remember on your square of paper and you had kind of like the line where everything went. So because this was ethanol in the bottom and these dots contained ethanol, they just went right along with the ethanol all the way to the top. You only had like one example where the spot was a little bit lower and that's because that particular spot, um, the solvent for that indicator was water, which is not quite as soluble with ethanol as ethanol is with ethanol. So the way paper chromatography works is by using intermolecular forces and especially um, polar versus nonpolar in order to bring a solution up through a solvent front. So it is important to remember that that's a technique that we've talked about because it does apply to some of the situations in this, in this unit. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful enough to get you through. Um, again, don't focus so much on all of the math. Be, be aware and capable of the math that I showed you and you should be fine. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.